Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. Well, here we are, episode number 65. And this morning, as I am recording this, we just had our Passover dinner last evening. And um, we're in the weekend, what many call the Holy Weekend. And um, so whether you are Jewish or Messianic and celebrating Passover, or whether you're in the Christian stream celebrating Easter this year, they both coincide on the same weekend. And uh, so that's in an amazing way has all of us together this year. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, my greetings to you all. I was I was thinking last evening after our dinner that we had, we did a, a we are messianic in our beliefs, and so we celebrated the Passover. And it's interesting. I was thinking, we talk about celebrating Passover, and uh, Passover has to do with the death of Yeshua. And I was thinking how interesting it is that with Passover or Easter, depending what term you want to use, um, we're celebrating the death of somebody. Where usually when somebody dies, we have a memorial service. But the reality is, is that uh, Jesus, Yeshua, is not just anybody. And his death is not a reason for sadness, his death is a reason for great joy and celebration because it results in our eternal life if we choose to accept it as the gift that he offers. So I just wanted to make a mention of that. Um, you may be listening to this on a different day uh, than Pesach or Easter, but um, I like to use the, the Pesach, the term Pesach, because that's the Hebrew term, and um, that's where it all started back in in Egypt, as, at the beginning of the Great Exodus, and the salvation. And it's interesting because even at a Jewish Seder, each participant is challenged to not just look back at 3,500 years or more of history, but to bring it right now to the present 
and ask what is in there what is there in my life that I need to be delivered from what is um, keeping me from life instead of death from blessing instead of cursing like the end of Deuteronomy says if we will follow his laws and remember the word for law is not law like I fought the law and the law won it is the word instruction which is a, I believe is a much better understanding of what the Torah really is and it kind of takes away the idea of the Old Testament and the New Testament because if it's instruction it's as valid today as it was when it was first given because it's as at the end of Deuteronomy it says if you will follow this instruction you will have life and not death and you will have blessing and not cursing so I just wanted to share those thoughts with you before we started today I wanted to um, Shirley and I were reading this week in uh, at the beginning of the week we were in, still in uh, well we still are in first Kings and in chapter 2 David has just um, is just passing away and handing the kingdom over to Solomon or Shlomo and one of the things he asks Solomon in first Kings 2 verse 8 and behold you have with you Shimei the son of Gera a Benjaminite of Bahurim which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. Now, when David went to Mahanaim is when he was being chased by Absalom. Absalom was attempting to take over the kingdom. And Shammai was standing there, essentially throwing stones at him and, uh, and telling David that he had got the kingdom illegitimately from Saul and uh, basically just really laying it on. And David just walked away and, and actually back at that part of the story he said if, if I deserve to be cursed then I deserve to be cursed uh, but leave him alone because one of the soldiers said let me take his head off <laughs> essentially but as David's coming back once Absalom is taken care of Shammai is, set, is down there oh I'm, I'm sorry I didn't really mean it you know and any of you know people like that <laughs> anyway Anybody know uh, leaders in our country like that? So David said, said to Shammai when he was coming back, he said, well, your life is safe with me. I, I, I'll, I'll not do anything to you. But as David is passing away, he tells Solomon, even though I'm not going to do anything, verse 9 now therefore hold him not guiltless for you are a wise man and know what you ought to do to him but make sure that his gray hair does not go down to the grave without blood so he's asking Solomon to even though he promised that he would not do anything he tells Solomon I know you're wise and I know you you'll think of what you need to do so as Solomon begins to take over the kingdom he starting with verse 36 and the king sent and called Shammai and, and said to him this is the king Solomon now Shlomo build a house in Jerusalem and dwell there and do not go anywhere from there in other words you, you must stay in Jerusalem for it shall be on the day that you go out of the city and pass over the brook Kidron you will know for certain that you will surely die your blood will be on your own head so he's giving him some grace he's saying listen if you stay in the city you'll be fine I, nothing's going to happen to you but if you go out then that's a different story you will be dealt with so Shammai said to the king you're saying is good as the Lord my king has said so will your servant do and Shammai dwelt in Jerusalem for many days so in other words he agreed to the terms. He, he signed the contract, as it were. And it came to pass at the end of three years. The two servants of his Shammai ran away unto Achish and Maachah, king of Gath, which was south and west of Jerusalem. 
And they told Shammai, saying, Behold, your servants are in Gath. And Shammai rose and saddled his donkey and went to Gath to Achish to seek his servants. And he went and brought his servants back. And it was told Shlomo, Solomon, that Shammai had gone out of Jerusalem and had come back. And the king sent and called Shammai and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord Yahweh to protest and protested unto you, saying, No, if for certain that if you go out and walk abroad any anywhere that you will surely die and you said you agreed the word that i have heard is good why then have you not kept the oath of yahweh and the commandment that i have charged with you and the king said moreover to shammai you know all the wickedness which is in your heart is which your heart is privy to that you did to david my father therefore the Lord Yahweh will return your wickedness upon your own head. And this and King Solomon sh shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before Yahweh forever. So the king commanded Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, who went out and dispatched. And so I was thinking about so what um what of the um well, let me let me do these comments after. I'm going to play some of the music. I'm going to do a little bit more of the uh, the new album, the cleansing frequency, and um, then maybe have some of it in the background. And I'll make some comments uh, coming out of S Psalm chapter seven. So let's do that first, and then I'll come back and we'll carry forward.
So, to continue on with Psalm chapter 7. O Yahweh my Elohim, if you have taken in you, I have taken refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. And so I was thinking about pursuers, um, being my being one of those who had pursued him lest they tear out my throat like a lion rending in pieces with no one to deliver and David really did feel he was running from Absalom feeling that his life was threatened O Yahweh my Elohim if I have done this if there is unrighteousness in my hands if I have done evil to him who was at peace with me or have plundered my enemy without cause let the enemy pursue me and overtake my being and trample my life to the ground and lay my esteem in the dust. Selah. So David's saying, if I've done these wicked things, then I deserve this. And that's exactly what he said when Shammai was cursing him. If, if I deserve this, then... But, he goes on to say after this Selah, stop and think about that. But then he says, Arise, O Yahweh, in your displeasure. Lift yourself up against the rage of my adversaries and awake for me, you shall command judgment. And let the congregation of the people gather about you, and over them return on high. Yahweh judges the people. Judge me, O Yahweh, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. And it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing. You know, we think of Psalm 51, David saying, create in me a clean heart. Here he's saying, I'm willing to accept your judgment, Yahweh. Um, because I choose you, I don't choose the world. That's what I hear him saying anyway. Please let the evil of the wrong be ended and establish the righteous. For the righteous Elohim is a trier of hearts and kidneys. And that's an interesting word um, because the Hebrew word for that is, it, it means the, the core of our being essentially is what it's really referring to. My shield is, a, is upon Elohim. In other words, I'm trusting him to protect me. Who He saves the upright in heart. Elohim is a righteous judge. And God is enraged every day by what he sees, I would add. Because he's righteous and what he sees is not righteousness. If one does not repent, he sharpens his sword and he bends his bow and makes it ready. And he has prepared for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows hot for pursuers. See, he, he who is bound with wickedness and has conceived trouble and brought forth falsehood. He has made a pit and dug it out and falls into the ditch that he made. Think of Haman being hung on the gallows that he made for Mordecai. His trouble turns back upon his own head, and his wrongdoing comes back on top of his head. I give thanks to Yahweh according to his righteousness, and praise the name of Yahweh, El Elyon, Most High. So, why do I, why do I keep hammering this? I keep, a lot of people say, you keep talking about the wicked being dealt with by Yahweh and us trusting Yahweh to do what he promises he'll do and and frankly I would just say that we have to continue to keep that in our minds because right now everything seems to be total chaos just falling apart leaders are being very wicked they're being you know they're defying even the laws of our land they're defying the constitution they're defying the norm the norms and morality that we've all at least i'm 68 almost 68 i am 68 <laughs> and i can remember a time when it was not so but like my son was and i were talking the other night on uh, our other podcast that we do rock hazak is that what we're seeing, we, we think that it's new and that it's all of a sudden it's being exposed. But the reality is, is that it's been going on even back when I was a kid. <laughs> um, I just didn't see it because it was being held behind a mask. It was being masked very well and most people didn't understand what was going on. But the masks are being pulled away. 
and the world system is beginning to show itself for what it really is and i don't know about you but for me in my house <laughs> so it's like joshua at the jordan choose you this day who you will serve but for me and my house we will serve yahweh the lord and i just want to encourage you all to make that same declaration for you and your house i would encourage you that this week as you see the crazy news continuing to roll out 24 7 that you will not be discouraged by what you see because what is really happening is our Heavenly Father is allowing the enemy to show his hand so that we can make a clear choice about who we want to serve. And I would, I would encourage you to make the declaration that you will serve Yahweh in this week ahead and the months ahead. The going is going to get rough, I believe. But if we are hiding ourselves in the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91, we will see it. And we might even experience it, but it's going to be for a short while because this, I was talking with somebody last night at the dinner, this existence right here and right now is such a brief lapse of time, almost insignificant compared to eternity with our Heavenly Father. So I would, I would just encourage you to endure, to hold fast, and to continue to make your commitments to your Heavenly Father because He is the one who really loves you. He's the one who really cares for you. And He will hide you in the secret place. So be blessed in your week. Shalom. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say. Little pun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.